So before the break, we asked who did this dorky teenager grow up to be? And the answer is the beautiful Angelina Jolie. <laughs> That's the 13-year-old Angelina Jolie there doing her best boy George impression. Uh, the Hollywood star did a pretty good job of marking herself out to be, uh, or from being uh, slightly geeky, to becoming a cool adult. Um, was it her geeky teenage years, though, that spurred her on? Steve, Natalie and Louise's thoughts in a second. Yours too on our usual number, and I would love you to get in contact with me this morning. We haven't got long left, so please get your calls in. 0207 173 5555. So, do uncool teens make the coolest adults? The struggling with milk bottle glasses and a pudding bowl haircut, one that I obviously still have, uh, <laughs> during those formative years make you all the more determined to be a stylish, go-getting adult. I mean, who would guess that this little one uh, would blossom into the lovely panellist you see before you today? It's me! Oh, no, it's not. It's me! No, it definitely is not. Um, you can okay. tell by the knobbly knees that uh, it's well, me. You know. uh, not to mention this one. Who's this, then? Yeah. Who do you think that oh, is? Oh, look. Oh, look at that. Uh, school days can be cruel <laughs> days, though. They can be very, very cool indeed. If you get labelled as a geek, then you're in for a struggle, while the pretty and popular people just coast on through. But psychologists agree that your teenage years play a massive part in defining who you are. Negative comments and jibes do get stored up and uh, make you more determined to do well. Sadly, uh, my mum couldn't dig out any evidence of how uh, cool I wasn't <laughs> as a teenager, but I'll give you a little description. I had uh, national health glasses. I had uh, pretty much the same haircut, but probably a little bit more bulbous. And uh, I had, uh, you know, braces. Yeah, ladies. Yeah, that's how I rolled. Anyway, um, <laughs> who'd have thought that I would turn out to be this suave, sophisticated gentleman that you see <laughs> in front? Yeah. All right, don't laugh. <laughs> There you go, there's an image of uh, how I did kind of look last week. Anyway, uh, uh, Louise, uh, in, you, in your book, you, of course, describe yourself as being a bit of a geeky teenager yourself, oh, was, don't you? Yeah, I was so geeky. I had the National Health Specs and, you know, I was really spotty. I had asthma. I was last picked for the school sports team, always. I was like, I was, yeah, <laughs> King of the, queen of the geeks at school. What, what oh, did you do? <laughs> <laughs> I was so <laughs> <laughs> if only I'd been in Scooby Doo, I'd be fantastic. <laughs> and and you know those kind of experiences. Yeah. Did they give you a kind of inner core of strength to be able to deal with, you know, later life? No, it just screwed me up really bad. Oh. No, no, it does, of course, it, I think it just gives you something to kick against, you know. It gives you, like, right, OK, I'm not, I'm not the most popular kid in school, but later on I'm going to do something great. And, uh, you know, I think, I think it does it just give you something to... I think geeks are more interesting, because mm. they've had a little bit to sort of, yeah, to kick against. And the people that were uh, horrible to you, do you still remember who they were? I do. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, exactly. And when you were like, you know, getting um, Michael Stipe to sing happy birthday yeah. to in front of 70,000 people, like, did you manage to I get hold of their see, phone numbers? See, mm -hmm. you might have been, you know, in the, you might have been goal attack in the, in the school netball team, but now look. Now, now look, yeah. now look, yeah, yeah there you go, what yeah. What a lovely sense of justice there is uh, to yeah. that. Yeah. I love the idea of these people blossoming. And as you say, the good-looking kids at school, they kind of had it too easy. They had nothing to fight oh, for Oh, you must prove. have been one of those. No. You must you, have been one of those. Do you know what? Those. My brother was incredibly uh, late developer and was really desperately shy at school, looked very young, and then suddenly he hit 17 and just blossomed. And I love the fact that... The guys who bullied him at school are just these little weasels now. They've done nothing with their lives, and there's just that real sense of justice. I love it. All the geeks as well are now earning loads of money because the intelligent kids at school who were working hard yeah. are now uh, running industry and, and top businesses. And all the good-looking girls at school now fancy the geeks that they wouldn't look twice at 20 yeah, years ago. Revenge yeah, revenge and nerds, revenge and nerds. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was a geek and didn't work hard, so there you go, I got that completely wrong. <laughs> Kirsty. OK, we have Sarah, and she's on line one. Hello, Sarah. Hello. How are you, you cool thing, you? Yeah, I am, aren't I? Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, I'm not bad, thank you. How are you? Um, I'm very well, very well indeed. Now, as a um, child, Sarah, yes. how was life for you? Um, life was very, very geeky for me. Like yourself, the NHS glasses. I actually did have a bowl cut. I do remember the bowl being put <laughs> on my head and being cut round it. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. OK. Long <laughs> right. Um, and then got sent off to a private school where I had to wear a green blazer and a straw hat. Um, 
and that totally just does nothing for your street cred when you know you're living in London and everybody else is going around in their Nike trainers and you know wanting to have fun playing on their bikes at the weekend. I did none of that. Um, but I definitely think, I mean, moving on through different schools, I was always a geek. I was always picked on for my name, for how I looked. It was turkey legs, um, various different names because I wore glasses. Um, and I do think it does definitely give you some kind of massive enthusiasm to want to do better as an adult. I've now got three boys of my own. Um, I think I'm a very cool person and a very cool mum now. Um, but, but, Sarah, just very quickly, do you make sure that your kids dress in a very cool way, make sure that they have cool haircuts just to kind of, you know, counter no, what well, you went through? I wouldn't through? say that to me. I say a lot of that is them wanting right. to actually have a cool haircut. Um, I, one of my sons does actually like to just wear whatever he wants, and whether he looks geeky or not, I can't really sort of tell him what to wear. But I do ensure that, you know, if we're going somewhere nice, that, yeah, they're going to put something cool on and that they're not going to look like the trampy geeky kid that walks in the harvester at the weekend. Um, so, yeah. OK, that's good. And what do you do now, Sarah? Um, I'm the director of my own business with my husband. Yeah. Um, our first million in six months. So, wow. Um, you don't run Harvester, yeah, then I take well, it. Right? No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. OK, thank you very much for that, uh, Sarah. And uh, that's it for today, I'm afraid. We're all out of time. Oh. Thanks to all of you for your calls, emails and texts. And, of course, thank you to Louise for joining us this morning. It's been a pleasure to have you here. And the best of luck with this book, Different for Girls. It's in shops now. It's a fantastic read. Now, Steve and Natalie, it's been another fantastic day. Thank you for joining us. See you back here again tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, the panel! <laughs> OK, uh, what can I tell you about tomorrow's show? Well, dancer par excellence Adam Garcia is going to be joining on the panel. Woo! Natalie's happy about that. We'll find out what it takes to tap dance for three hours every day. Plus, we'll be asking, do you have any nickname for your partner? It's nice or nauseating. All that tomorrow. Peace! <laughs>